hate when my bra straps fall down. Does that happen to you guys too? I really need a new bra. Hello, welcome to episode nine of the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast. My name is Lisa, and I am coming to you from Long Island, New York, in the United States. Welcome to 2021, everybody. I am so excited to finally be in a new year. So, things are still crazy, things are still tough, um, but here's hoping that this year will be a bit brighter overall than these past several, several months have been for all of us. Um, so this is a podcast about knitting and spinning. Um, you guys can see I have a new setup today. I was all set to podcast way earlier in the day today outside and instead of that, I, re I just realized it's, it's super, super cold now. And yeah, the last, <laughs> for my year in review episode, which was the last one that I put out last week, um, it was like 28 degrees. That was crazy. I was so cold. Um, I had to keep coming back inside and warm up my fingers and it was it was just kind of insane and so yeah i just i just really needed to create a little space um in my basement which is where i do all of my knitting um so i spent i spent this afternoon kind of tidying things and we're, we're testing out some some lighting because we are in the basement and it there's no windows down here, so it is very dark, and yeah, there's fluorescent lights and everything. So so we're playing around today. I'm hoping so much that this is going to be a really good solution um, so that I can podcast indoors and not feel like the only um, clear area <laughs> and well-lit area is outside. So no natural light today and yeah, I will, I'm sure I'll go back outside and do some outdoor episodes because I do really enjoy just, just sitting outside. Um, but you know, it's, it's just too cold. I mean, it was almost 40 today, so that's way better than 28. But if you guys have been with me, you've noticed that I talk about knitting a lot and my episodes tend to be on the longer side. So yeah, it, it's just not the season for sitting outside. So I have some tea today for the first time on the podcast. I don't know what took me so long. Um, I love drinking tea. The tea that I am drinking is from a local to us shop in Huntington on Long Island and I will insert the name right here for you guys and in the description box below. Um, my husband gave me a whole bunch of tea for Christmas and so I am trying out the new, one of the new ones that he gave me and it is called Nutty Dessert and it has, it's got hazelnut and vanilla and some kind of other like it's tea. I mean, it obviously tea. It's not. It's not green tea. It's not black tea. It, it was something that I hadn't heard of, and I cannot remember it off the top of my head. So I'll probably insert that here as well. Um, yeah. So this is super hot right now because I just steeped my second cup, and yeah. So um, let's just get into it. Um, you guys. Before we get into it, I think that I mentioned in one or two of the last episodes that I do have a giveaway planned for when we hit 
500 subscribers and we're getting really close. So if you've been with me and you like this podcast, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button. We only need about 90 more people, I think, to get to the 500, which is when I'm going to announce the giveaway. So I've got some wonderful, a wonderful little giveaway planned for you all. And I will share that with you all as soon as we hit that magic 500 number. So go ahead and hit subscribe, like this video, hit that little notification bell so that you um, don't miss any episodes. I am actually, in addition to putting out a weekly episode that is, you know, structured with my finished objects and whips and um, spinning and all of that thing stuff, I have started doing some unboxing videos with Paradise Fibers. Um, my husband got me a subscription to the Fiber Club for Christmas. And so I've already done one unboxing, which was super fun. And today I received my January subscription. So there will be another video coming. So every once in a while, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna be sneaking in some extra episodes in between my weekly episodes. So if you don't want to miss those, then um, just hit that little bell and you'll get a notification. Okay, so that is all I have to say about that. All right, so let's just get into it. Um, what am I wearing? Most of you are probably gonna recognize this sweater. Um, this is my Tecumseh, which is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter from Boylan Knitworks. And I knit this sweater two years ago, almost to the day. Um, let me see, I have some notes here. I, I cast on, I was looking at my Ravelry to refresh my memory. I cast on for this sweater on January 5th, 2019. So today is the 8th, so that's, that's pretty much two years ago. and. According to my Ravelry, I finished it on February 13th. So this this only took me maybe five weeks to knit. Um, I went through it pretty quickly and I loved it. This was, it wasn't the first color work sweater that I did, but it it was among the first. I A couple of years ago, I had like a really big like color work sweater year and I just, I, I got into color work and I just couldn't stop. It is so addicting. Um, so this was one of the sweaters that I knit and I'm going to insert some pictures so that you can see the full garment. I'm kind of shoved back in a little corner here and there's just not room for me to stand up and yeah. So the yarn that I used was Malabrigo Dos Tierras and that is a 50-50 merino wool and alpaca blend and it is so luxurious. This is um I have it right here, I'm gonna show you. The first Malabrigo that I ever worked with actually was this sweater. So um, the colors that I used, I had to, I wrote them down. Um, the main body color is pearl. So, and this is like a really standard, um, like gray, right? It's so pretty. This yarn is so, so soft. Um, and then these little plus signs here were knit with this beautiful purple. This is my favorite color. You guys know that purple is my favorite color. I have not shown you very much purple yarn, but there is a specific shade of purple that is my favorite, and it is this exact shade here. This is called Hollyhock, and it is so pretty. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I love, I love all shades of purple, but there's just something about this purple. My flute bag that I carry my flute in is this shade of purple. It's fantastic. I cannot get enough of this kind of purple. So, highly recommend it. Just look at that. So, if you're ever wondering what is Lisa's shade of purple, this is it. I think I also have a fossil bag in this color. It's just the best. 
Um, okay. And then, so this yarn here, this variegated one is Anniversary, Anniversario. And that is what this one looks like. So yeah, so I actually have a really good amount left over. I can't remember off the top of my head how many, I wanna say I needed maybe nine skeins total. So I think I got maybe eight skeins total. I think I used maybe five, like I bought five of this and this is how much I have left over, which is a pretty decent amount. Um, you know, and this one was, I bought either two or three. Like I really, I can't remember. I did not actually put that in my Ravelry. And then this was just one skein because there's not that many of the plus work motif. Look at all of this that I have left over. Like I need, I need to make something else with this. I just have not decided what, but it's like there's, there's almost identical amounts of yarn here. A little bit less of this one, but these two here are, are pretty, pretty similar in, in how much yardage is left. So I don't know if anybody has an idea of something that I could make with this much yarn, let me know because I want to use it up. It's just, it's so pretty. So I, yeah, I love, I love this sweater. Um, I did not make any modifications to the pattern. I know that some people didn't like how the, um, the depth here in the arm of the yoke. So a lot of people actually split for the sleeves way earlier to make it a more like fitted sleeve. So I didn't do that. I like it. It's super comfy, super cozy. Um, this actually was my most liked sweater on Ravelry. So, I mean, not that many, <clears throat> excuse me, I should sip my tea. Um, pardon me one second. Okay. Not that many people really like, you know, check out my Ravelry page. But I mean, the most of the time when I'm when I'm going to visit people's Ravelry pages is when I am interested in knitting a specific sweater or project, any any article, and I just want to check out what other people have made. And like like fourteen people, like I mean, I have like a whole bunch of other things. I've get like maybe one or two favorites on it, and like fourteen people liked this sweater. So. I don't know what it is. I just, I think it's the colors because I just, I love the colors. I don't know. So my husband also took some really nice pictures of me. So maybe that had a little bit of something to do with it, but he does all my pictures. So I don't know. I'm really happy with this one. So I know that like tons of you have knit this, but if you haven't, and if you like it, then you should, cause it's super cozy. So. All right, that is all I have to say. Actually, no, it's not. I just wanted to give a little shout out um, to Marina from Yarn Matters in Williamsburg, Virginia, because that's why I purchased this yarn and she kind of like helped me um, decide, I was deciding between a, f a few different um, color combinations and she was really patient with me as I was like taking all of the different colors of the Malabrigo out and like laying them in like her windowsill at the shop and yeah if you have an opportunity to visit Williamsburg definitely check out Yarn Matters. Um, Marina is super sweet. We have been following each other on Instagram ever since. Um, we really hit it off because I am a flutist and Marina is a cellist so there's just lots of things in common. So but she's a super, super sweet person and her shop is super cute. So, all right. So now I have only one finished object. So I'm going to get that right here. All right. So I was kind of hoping to get these done for Christmas for my son, but 
Well, I mean, if you guys watched about his Christmas sweater, then you know <laughs> the kind of the traumatic, um, not really traumatic, but there, there was a lot that happened with that sweater and it ended up just, just kind of dominating my time. So, um, yeah, Owen's, Owen's Christmas sweater, if you guys want to know about that and why that was pretty much the only thing I got done, go check out my last two episodes. Um, uh, yeah, so he has been asking me for rainbow sparkly socks to match mine for two years and I finally made them. So he is so happy. He doesn't know I finished them because if he knew that I finished them, these would be stinky because they would have been on his feet already and then I wouldn't have had them to show you today. So I kind of, I kind of hid them and he'll, he'll be able to get them now in the morning. Um, so this is some Knitterly Things sock yarn and it is sparkly. You know, you can really see that sparkle in that Stellina. It is so, so glittery. I made a pair of these for myself with this yarn two years ago, as I said, and they're just fantastic. I refer to mine as my rainbow bright socks. I don't know if any of you guys are 80s kids and were into Rainbow Bright. I know Rainbow Bright made like a comeback. I don't know when, but you know, within the last decade maybe. Like a kind of like like My Little Pony came back and all that 80s stuff kind of came back. But um yeah, so I, this just reminds me of Rainbow Bright. So these I call my Rainbow Bright socks and now Owen Owen just wanted them. He said, I want you to make me those rainbow sparkly socks. Okay, so I don't know why. He asked me two years ago. I finally did it. I had plenty of yarn. I still had plenty left over. Um, this, let me just grab the, I'm going to sneeze. So I still have some left over. I still have this much left over. I made socks for me. And socks for Owen. Now, all right, I do have tiny feet. And then, all right, this isn't gonna look good in the in this light. It's be super blown out. But this is like a super bright orange. So his mine, I didn't use the um, I didn't use this orange for mine. I just used this. But he likes orange, and I figured I would do the heel for him so that I could keep the stripes. Um, I use for, I say this every episode because I'm always showing off um, Owen's socks, but just in case you haven't joined me before, the pattern for this that I use for all of Owen's socks is the half pint socks pattern, and it's by J.M. Cobb, and it's just great. So, I, you know, it just has like a little heel flap and gusset. It's my favorite way to knit, to knit a heel still so far. I only tried after that heels once, I don't know. I'm not sold on those yet, but I'm going to try them again in the new year. So, so that's the only finished object I have, but Owen's going to be super pleased. So that's finished objects. This is really yummy, nutty dessert. Yeah. So good. I think on, um, on my Christmas episode, I mentioned that my husband had gotten me a special mug. So this is one, like it, it's not a cute knitting mug like, like all of you guys use on your podcasts. I have a few of those. Actually, I don't really have that many of those. I have a couple like regular mugs. But this one has like a, a steeping thing as part of it and a lid and it's like really nice and warm and then it has this rubber um section to to grip it on because this part's pretty hot but this was a christmas gift from my husband last year from the same place that he gets my tea and i use this almost every day almost every day 
I, the steeping your own tea is just, I never knew how amazing it could be. It's life changing. So I still drink like regular, regular tea. And whenever I just like have a little, a little tea packet, what are those things called? I don't even know. Um, tea bags. <laughs> whenever I just have like a regular little tea bag, then I, I pull out my other mugs. But yeah, this is, it's just like a nice personal little steep your own tea thing. So, okay. Let's do whips. My first whip is a pair of socks and my contrasting heel and cuff yarn just rolled away. I'll be right back. Let's try this again. Okay, <laughs> so my first whip is a pair of socks and this was a Christmas cast on. I had received some Christmas sock colorways pretty late in the game because the U.S. Postal Service was so overwhelmed and things just got really delayed, which is understandable. They worked so hard and we appreciate them so much. Um, but so what I did instead was I did a Christmas cast on. So on, on Christmas night, I cast on these socks. This is also knitterly things. This one is not um, self-striping, but it is like a variegated and it's really cool. It's called Naughty and Nice. And I, she, she gave you the option of getting either one or two colors for mini skeins if you wanted. And so I chose this one. I think the other one was like a red. Um, so I don't know what the name of this one is, just I don't, I don't remember. Um, but this is what the skein looks like and it is super pretty. So I actually, I don't have any Christmas socks. So I just wanted to go and cast a pair on. I have been knitting so many vanilla socks lately that I decided to change it up. Us well, usually also I, I knit on double points. Um, I usually knit on my Haya Haya sharps um size one needles um but those were still in owen socks so i grabbed some chow goo and i'm just doing magic loop for this kind for this one um so i'm up to the heel and i'm gonna have to look at the pattern now because the pattern that i am knitting this one the sock is the it's the vanilla is the new black pattern and so I grabbed another pair of socks um, because I wanted to be able to show you the heel. Um, so there's like a little chart for this heel and it's, it's just so different. So it's basically, it's a vanilla sock. And then the only thing is different is that you don't do like a short row heel or a heel and gusset, heel flap and gusset or an afterthought heel or anything. You follow this cute little chart of like knit and purl stitches and you like you put some markers and you do some increases and you you just increase out for the heel and then there's no gusset it I, yeah it's so cool and and it looks so cute too so I don't know you know it's just like a little a little ribbing that also has increases to just make the perfect little shape to fit your heel. So I've knit this pattern twice. It is not one that I can do from memory for the heel. I haven't knit it that much yet. Maybe one day if like if I knit a lot of these, I'll have it I'll have it memorized. But so I've been kind of I've been kind of stuck with this sock um, until I have a chance to sit down with the chart and do the heel. And then once I do that, I don't have to do any gusset decreases or anything. It's just everything is in the heel chart. And then you just knit the foot and decrease for the toe and you're done. And it's just really fun. So if you guys haven't tried this pattern yet, give it a shot. I don't remember. I want to say the designer's name is Anna Fletcher. I'm not positive. I, I'm going to put that 
right here on the screen and then also in the description box below. Everything that I talk about, I'm going to put in the description box below. So, um, yeah, so if I don't get it quite right here, it'll be there um, for you guys to look at. So, so that's where this whip is. And um, I did really, I got a lot of it done really quickly, but I've had, I've had some other things on the needles, which I will get to, um, that have had to take precedence and yeah, but I have also had a chance to work on my worsted boxy. So I wanted to show you guys the progress that I've made on that. Um, I have managed to get a bunch of this done, mostly, um, when I'm on zoom, which I have been on. A bit. I mean, the, the great thing about this pattern <laughs> is that it's it's just stocking at in the round for a million inches. So I think I have to go up until 17 inches and then I can split. It's kind of all bunched up here. So, but this is a lot more than I had had done the last time I showed it to you. So I'm pretty pleased. I, I just pick this up like when I'm on Zoom and don't have to be thinking about anything. So this is like my, my mindless project. I think, I think I have about 14 inches on this. So I think, I think I'm getting pretty close. I think I have to go until maybe 17 inches and then I'm gonna have to actually read the pattern again. So yeah, I am alternating I am on um I've gone through two full skeins already and I think I have six I think I only need five um for for my size but I do have six skeins but I am on like the third and the fourth now and the only reason that one is bigger than the other is because the ribbing at the bottom I did not alternate skeins so for the whole like little ribbing part I just knit from one skein because it wasn't that big of of a ribbing like it wasn't that many inches or anything it's just really short um, and then once I started just the stockinette I have been every single row alternating um, so this is Malabrigo Rios in this is my first um, Rios that I've ever worked with, too. So, like, both of these sweaters are Malabrigo. I didn't actually even plan that, but, yeah, the only two Malabrigos that I've ever worked with, and I'm wearing one and working on another. So, this is Va, and you can see it's like a really deep green really murky with some really dark shades of green, a little bit of blues and a little bit of like a, a more yellowy green in there. So maybe like a little brown too. This is, is different for me. I don't usually gravitate towards these colors. Like I always want to pick purple, always want to pick purple. And I, I have another, um, sweater quantity of Rios in purple mystery, which is very purple. Um, and that is reserved for my weekender sweater, which hopefully I'll cast on this year. I don't know, but yeah, so I do have Rios in purple, but I, I just, I tried to pick something really different and I tried to pick, um, just a color that I thought would be kind of really good for both the fall and the winter months. So I figured that this, this green was pretty good. Like it's, it's not like a Christmassy green, but definitely it's, it's wintery and definitely you can have like a deep green for like the fall months. So that's kind of what I was thinking with this. So let's see, I'm like, I'm really pleased with my progress on it. Um, I only pick this up when I have periods of knitting that like periods of time where I want to be knitting, but don't have the opportunity to concentrate because I have a big project that is requiring 
so much concentration. So much. So I'm going to put this away and then I'm going to dig out my test knit. So hang on. not so warm anymore it's like a little bit warm okay my big project that I am working on I was I was telling you guys about the post office before break before break I don't know before the holidays is what I meant to say um, and I was waiting on to be able to start this test knit I had I had to order yarn because I did not have enough of any single color in my stash that I could just start. So I'm gonna show you, um, now, I'm gonna show you the yarn first. And one of them I'm gonna show you. So this is what I was waiting on for like three weeks. It was the main color of my sweater. And there we go, that's focusing a little bit better. So this is from Barrett Wilco, and it's the Wisconsin Woolen Spun. This is so nice. I am learning to really love natural yarn. This is the colorway um, Oats. And I was just going on a hunch that it was going to go really, really well with these other two colors. So um, the test net that I'm doing is called the Noctuidae sweater, and it is by Katherine Clark, and she, um, she's the owner of Brooklyn General, and she is also the designer of the Ishtel, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, the Ishtel sweater that was the cover sweater of one of the pom-pom issues that like so many people on Instagram have been knitting. It's on my list. Um, I don't have yarn for that. But when I saw that she needed test knitters for this sweater, I jumped on it because I was so excited about it. It's so cute. Um, it's got moths all over it. All right, so I purchased these from Catherine uh, from Brooklyn in general. And these are the same colors that she used for the color work. So this one is too cool. And I've got the label here, so hang on. And this is my first time knitting with too cool. So this is the color Ray, R-A-E. And this is what the, um, the label looks like. Just trying to trying to get used to where it might focus. I don't know. I don't know if I have to. So I don't know if it's gonna focus super well. I'm gonna have to play around with um, with the lighting. We're gonna work on some lighting within the next month as we can, but. Um, yeah, all right, so this isn't focusing, but that's what the label looks like, and it is 100% finished wool, and yeah, it's it's just really, really rustic, and I've never knit with it before, and so that's really cool, and this is a really rustic one as well. Like, I just figured that these would go really well together, and I figured just, like, the oat colorway would be really great to pair with the spin cycle. So this is, um, it's the same colorway. This, this colorway of the spin cycle is called Noctuidae. Um, and it's the same one that, that Catherine used in her sweater. But if you guys know spin cycle, um, everyone is a little bit different. Like it's never going to look exactly the same, but it's still going to be beautiful. So I'm really excited. So I, I got these like right away, but I was waiting on this for three weeks. And then when it came, it was like two days before Christmas. And I just, I just didn't have time to cast it on at that point, like right then, because then we were like right in the middle of the holidays, right? 
So I had to, I had to wait a couple of days until like just things settled down from, from the holiday <laughs> excitement. So I'm going to show you guys, um, the progress that I have made here. And I can't, I can't go into detail about the pattern because I am test knitting it. And, um, you know, she just, she doesn't want us to reveal very much right now, but I can show you what I have done. It is very, I've got just like a 32 inch circular right now and I'm working on the yoke and it's just all scrunched up. So, you know, it is what it is right now. I can't, I'm looking forward to being able to split for the arms for so many reasons. <laughs> oh my goodness. So this is what I have so far. So this is actually the back. So this, this is like the center of the back right there. And um, let me get those ends inside. So it's just, it's gorgeous. Right, and it is so fun. So that's the first little round of moths. And see if I can kind of like stretch it a little bit and show you guys. So, you know, like this doesn't give anything away or anything, but so there's, that's where the three color knitting happens is, is in the middle of the moths. And it is so pretty. Okay. I am really, really concerned about whether I'm gonna be able to get this this done in the amount of time that I have. I have under two weeks, just under two weeks to get this done now. She wants to release this on the 21st of this month. Normally, normally I am a very fast knitter. Okay, so I had a three week delay in my yarn getting here and you can't, you just can't start start something when you don't have all of your materials. I mean, that is just obvious, but okay. So I have done a lot. I have done a lot of color work knitting and I've gotten pretty quick at two, at two color, color knitting. And I've done, most of it has been like fingering weight. So, you know, I, I kind of had, an idea that, you know, it was going to take longer than just like single color knitting, but you know, I'm pretty, I'm, pr I've gotten pretty quick at, at color work. I have only knit before one color work sweater that had three colors in it. And it was a while ago. And Let's just say that I forgot how slow I am with three color knitting. I am so frustrated. I am so slow. I cannot get into a good rhythm with this sweater. It is fun. I enjoy the pattern. I am not yet enjoying knitting with three colors. I forgot how slow it was from last time. Okay, and so without showing you the whole sweater, I mean, I can insert a picture and it'll give you an idea. I'll insert one that, um, that she herself has posted. So I think I've inserted it before. It's color work for the whole entire sweater not just the yoke, not just the body, but for the sleeves also. I am so slow. I mean, I am, yeah, it is taking me so long just to do one round when it is three colors. I just, I can't get into a good rhythm. All right, so I knit continental style. So I hold my yarn all in my left hand. I don't know how to knit the American way. I have no idea. I know that sometimes when people do color work, they knit holding yarn in both hands. I don't think that I'm gonna have time to like really teach myself how to do that. So if any of you know of a good 
video on YouTube that I could watch with like a good method of knitting with three colors, continental style. Maybe that would help me out. I honestly haven't looked yet. I'm just kind of fighting my way through this. It's like at first, everything was just getting too twisted up and I was spending so much time untangling. And so like what I'm doing now is I've got, um, let's see, everything's like attached to the sweater right now. I'm not gonna knit right now, but basically like I'm holding the this color strand in front and then this one and then for the little bits of other color work I'm, I'm trying to hold this one like off to the to the right so like I've got these kind of sitting on this side and I'm trying to just keep this one separate until I need it so that it doesn't keep getting all tangled and I'm having mixed success with that Sometimes it works really well and I manage to keep things untangled for quite a while. And and then certain rows, just, just having to pick up the floats in a certain way. Some rows, it's easier than others. It just depends like where those colors fall and how like how frequently I have to insert that third color the less frequently I have to insert it, it's almost more difficult because I have to really be conscious about picking up the floats, catching the, I'm not picking them up, catching the floats when I'm not using that color. So sometime in some rows, it's like, I'm just using like two stitches of that color, not in the whole row, but for like, there's like a certain number of repeats of the chart. And, and sometimes it'll just be like two, in the center and then I have to like remember to keep picking it up. I, I'm really concerned. I am panicking. I, I am like outright panicking. I know like she told me not to worry about it when I was like my yarn still hasn't arrived. I haven't been able to get started but I haven't even split for the sleeves yet. I am on now the second moth which is a little bit bigger and once I get through <laughs> it's like it's so many rows once I get through these next this next set of moths I get to then split for the arms so you know there's so many stitches around it's like close to 400 right now so every single round is just so slow and it is so many stitches it is so many stitches so like at least when I get through the yoke and can split and and put the arms on hold at least then like the circumference is gonna shrink by like a significant amount of stitches there's still like the whole body that I have to get through but at least it's not gonna be like 400 stitches for every round at that point so I'm just praying that the process is going to start to speed up once I can split for the arms because I have about 12 days with any other sweater I could totally do it I am I'm just I'm seriously kind of freaking out because <coughs> I, I don't ever agree to do a test knit that I'm not like a hundred percent sure that I can complete in the time frame and the time frame I had was like I thought it was enough time I did not anticipate my yarn taking three full weeks to arrive and then Christmas happened and <sighs> so I was left with like three weeks to knit this entire sweater it's just a lot of color work, which is fantastic. This sweater, I'm so excited about this sweater. I love it. I'm just really slow and I'm panicking. So I'm gonna stop talking about it now. It's gonna be beautiful. It is going to be worth it. 
But basically, I'm not working on anything else. This is it. I've got a little bit of a sock that I'm working on. The only reason I'm even knitting on socks and um, am I worst at boxy at all is because sometimes I have opportunity to knit, but not by myself in a quiet environment. Like I'd be hanging out with my family, with Owen, and he's doing his own thing. And I'm just gonna get interrupted too many times to like be following charts and working with three colors. I just, this is like, I need to concentrate. Complete concentration for this. So the only reason I'm knitting on anything else at all is when I have opportunity to knit, that is not when I can concentrate. So mindless opportunity. Okay, so those are all of my whips. I actually do have spinning for you today. So not much, not much, but I have some. So let's move on to spinning. All right, oh, spinning, it's over here. So, all right, when I, I and a lot of you might not have watched my Paradise Fibers unboxing video, but at the end of that video, I decided that for the new year, I wanted to spin for like every day for like 15 minutes. So I wanted to do that like 100 days of spinning thing that, that people do. You know, it's like a hashtag on Instagram, hashtag 100 days of like whatever thing you're wanting to do 100 days of. Um, we're on day eight of the year and I've done one day of spinning. I started a thread. <laughs> I started a Ravelry group, you guys. Go join my Ravelry group. Um, I can't even remember to check in on the group. I think I remembered once to even like visit it. And like two people had joined. I was shocked because like I hadn't even announced it yet. Okay, so guys, here's my official announcement. I started a Ravelry group. So it is called um, Stop Dropping It Podcast. So go find that group and join. That is where... I will be doing all kinds of fun things like spin alongs and knit alongs and whatever. So, all right, so I did start a thread for 100 days of spinning. I I'm already not even keeping up with my own spin along. This is terrible. All right, so one thing that I couldn't ever really figure out about the whole 100 days hashtag thing are you supposed to do 100 consecutive days of something? Like 100 straight days. It just doesn't seem realistic to me, right? So, I mean, because it's really hard. And like, I mean, it's easy to be like, okay, well, I skipped that day, so I'll just do double time this day. And, oh, I skipped four days. I'll just, I'll spend for an hour instead of 15 minutes. But... The whole goal for me for this year is just to spin much more consistently. So what I'm thinking is that since I am already not keeping up with my own thread, is that it's just not going to be consecutive days. I am going to aim to spin for at least 100 days of 2021. I might have to skip. I mean, there's 365 days, right? So I should be able to get 100 days in. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping much, much more than that. Like I'm, I'm hoping that it can come, become super consistent. So, but I mean, I'm kidding myself if I think that I can do 100 straight days, even 15 minutes a day. Like it seems reasonable, but like I've got this test net right now and I, I just, you know, spinning for 15 minutes would be like a nice break and distraction, but, but I just, I just don't see myself 
getting much spinning in until I have that sweater done. So um, I haven't decided when I'm going to close the thread. Kind of what I'm thinking now is just leave it open for the entire year. And it can just be like one of these ongoing things. And just kind of whoever wants to participate in the challenge to spin for like 100 or more days can join and then um maybe a few times throughout the year like instead of just on the 100th day of the year ending it and like I want to draw a prize like a fiber related prize um for ev out of everybody who participates so if that sounds good to you guys then come spin with me and I mean I'm a fairly new spinner I consider myself very new even though I've been spinning for two years, I do it so infrequently that I'm basically a newbie still. And I've only really done a drop spindle. And I've got over there, hiding behind my sheep, is my purple, my eel wheel nano that I got last year for Christmas. So that is really cool. I can dig that out in a little bit. But, um... Okay, mostly drop spinning for me. I don't have a wheel. Any method of spinning you want, just more consistently. All right, so what I did with my spinning was I finally spun my way on my drop spindle through the rest of this blue and purple fiber. So this is, I can't like hold all of this in my hands. I will just show you, I have um, this much. These are all singles and I just dropped one and it's unraveling. I drop everything on this podcast. I drop everything. Um, so I'm just gonna like pick two to show you. This is a BFL and it's Fab Just Fibers. And yeah, so it's a blue face luster. My first, and now that's not showing a really pretty color now. I don't know. So yeah, I think it is so pretty. Just the blues. And the purples in it so I have just a handful of singles and so now I need to get plying so because I spun this on my drop spindle I'm gonna do the plying on my drop spindle so that's gonna get started hopefully soon um, okay so there's that so I was I was just proud of myself because it was taking me forever I have been working on spinning my way through that four ounces of fiber basically for a year it's kind of ridiculous kind of ridiculous i was so on and off with it mostly off um yeah so that's why i want to start like just spinning all the time especially now because my husband got me the Paradise Fiber subscription, so I'm going to be getting a lot of fiber coming in, and I don't want it to just all build up. I want to actually, like, spin it up and turn it into yarn and turn it into wonderful things that I can wear and use, not just hoard it, right? Um, okay, so since I have, I have all of my other spinning here, too, and I'm going to show you um, me dig this out. Um, I'm so mad at myself because I misplaced the adapter for my eel wheel. I don't know where I put it and I have to find it so that I can get spinning on this again. But this is my eel wheel nano. It is so cute. My husband got me this for Christmas last year. This was like the thing that I asked for from him. And um, oh, this is probably the front of it. So this is a little electric wheel and it is portable and I spun up all of this blue BFL on it. So I have, how many bobbins do I have? One, two, I'm gonna get my bobbins now. But I lost, I misplaced my adapter to plug it in so I can't use it yet. Um, I think it's five. I think I have five. So, oh, I've got this one little bit that didn't get spun. But and I'm probably going to drop these two. But yeah, I've got, I've got five bobbins of 
See, I'm dropping it. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got five bobbins. So these are the bobbins that come with the eel wheel. So they come in teal and purple and cream. Super pretty. Um, this is the only yarn that I have spun on it. But I really, really had a lot of fun working with it. And it's much quicker than the drop spindle. So what I'm thinking is that um, with my Paradise Fibers subscription, I want to do those on the eel wheel because I'm gonna be getting fiber every month and I'm just not fast enough with my drop spindle. So so I'm thinking that Paradise Fibers, I'm gonna mainly spin on the eel wheel and then other fibers that are not my monthly subscription, I'll probably work simultaneously on my drop spindle so that I always have something that I'm spinning on my eel wheel and then something that I am spinning with my drop spindle. And I have a couple of drop spindles. I have um, these two you have seen. I have this one. And I don't, I don't remember like what types of drop spindles they are other than they're like a little bit purple, of course, and super pretty. And then so their top top whirl is that what it's called top whirl like I don't even know the terminology that's how new I am I think it's called a top whirl because the that's at the the weight is at the top and not the bottom right so I have like two of these one is bigger than the other um and then I also let me stick this over here I also have this um Turkish spindle, and I've never used this. It's it's just sitting in my thing looking pretty. But this was, um, I picked this up at a festival and it says um, Turtle Made. I don't know what that means. It says Turtle Made. I don't know if that's a brand, but this was, I believe that this was 3D printed. So I haven't learned how to use this yet. Anybody out there do any Turkish spin spindling, spindling, spinning, Turkish? I don't know. You know what to say. But yeah, so it's on my list, right, of things to, to just kind of test out. So yeah, so that's what I have. And that's the spinning that I have to show you today. Um, yeah, so... It's, I'm not going to do 100 consecutive days, obviously. But I think what I'll do is I will keep the thread open for the, just kind of ongoing, for the entire 2021. Maybe we'll even do it every year. I don't know. Um, but, and then maybe periodically, maybe quarterly, or every maybe every four months maybe so maybe three times we can like draw prizes out of everybody who's participating so I think that that would be a good way to do it because I don't want to feel the pressure to try to spin every single day because like knitting is my go-to and I, I have a lot of big projects all the time with my knitting and yeah and that way like people are sure to find the thread late because I mean there's only three of us there so far right so um this way like you can you can just jump in anytime and then I'll just three times a year every four months I will draw a prize I think that sounds like a good way to do it so all right I don't have any acquisitions to show you this week oh but I do want to mention that Julia from Knitterly Things, her, like you guys know, I mean, all not all the socks I knit are hers, but I mean like a good number of them are Knitterly Things yarn. That's because I subscribe to her monthly club. She has two. I subscribe to both. Um, yeah, so she just started that again. She just opened it up. She opens it up. Um, one of them she only opens up in January for like the whole year. And you can you can choose um, 
whether you want to pay for the whole thing up front or if you want to break it down into monthly, which is what I do. I just, I pay every month. I, I don't know if there's a discount for paying for the whole year up front or not. You'd have to look at that. Um, but she just opened that one up. And so I think that's the remix club is like, she, she has that one where you can only sign up in January. But then she has her Vesper Sock Yarn Club and she opens that up quarterly for sign up. So every three months you can sign up. So she just opened both of those up. So you can, you can even choose for that one, whether you wanna sign up for like just the three months or if you wanna sign up for the full 12 months, which is what I did because I'm just, I'm addicted to knitterly things yarn. I just like rainbow yarn. I like self-striping yarn. I like socks. It's, it's, yeah, I have a lot. I have a lot of knitterly things. Um, Julia is also going to be, she actually, I got it today. I don't have it right here to show you, but she has provided some yarn for our um, 500 subscriber giveaway and a project bag. And I am going to be including a, one or two small little things along with that giveaway of my own. Well, not mine, but I'm gonna, I've got a couple things that I am going to include that I am purchasing for the giveaway. So yeah, so Julia has been gracious enough to donate Knitterly Things yarn for our first 500 subscriber giveaway. And we are, last I checked, at 409. We're getting super close. So um, yeah, so subscribe so that I can announce the giveaway really soon. So there's one more thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about, and that is another knit along. Actually, the, the only knit along because the other one is a spin along, right? So yeah, I want to start a knit along in my Ravelry group. So join the Ravelry group. And this knit along is going to be knitting from stash. So I think I'm going to call it like hashtag stop, drop and knit your stash, something like that. Um, yeah. So I think we'll do that because, um, I have a lot of stash and not only do I have a lot of stash, but I have, I have a lot of really, really nice stash that I have accumulated. Um, when I got into knitting sweaters a few years ago, my, um, my stash started, start, started to spiral a little bit because I just, I love knitting sweaters so much and I didn't used to know when I like when I randomly visited a yarn shop like I didn't used to know how much yarn I would need for a certain project because if I didn't have a project in mind then I just I had a really hard time like buying yarn because I didn't know if I was gonna have enough for an eventual project. So I would just basically pick up a few skeins of like sock yarn, something simple like that. Um, but then I started knitting sweaters and I started to just learn about how much yardage I was going to need to pick up for a sweater for like a main color or, you know, if I wanted to do color work. So I've start and then of course like you see all these projects on like Instagram and on Ravelry and your queue builds up at least mine does. I have like a really long queue of sweaters that I want to knit more than I can actually knit my way through. And I have actually purchased the yarn already for several sweaters. A lot of sweaters. I have a bunch of sweater quantities of yarn sitting here waiting to be knit up. Some of them I bought at festivals to make specific projects. Like I've got sweater kits for Sunset Highway. I still haven't knit that sweater up. That's like how many years ago did people make that sweater? 
three now, right? Because I think I bought that kit at like the 2018 Maryland Sheep and Wool. So I have that ready to knit up. I've got um, at the 2019 Maryland Sheep and Wool, I bought a kit for the Comfort Fade sweater, Andrea Mowry. I've, I've just got, and I've got like a sweater quantity ready to knit for the Ginny cardigan with the Harrison nightshades, right? Um, Harrisville, Harrisville, nightshades. I think I said it wrong. Um, and I just, there's others too. Um, and then there's, so there, like, I've got the weekender that I mentioned earlier. I've got that ready to go. I have things that are ready to go that just need to be cast on. And then I also have just things that are not yet a specific sweater, but that it's a sweater quantity because I said, I really like this. I could see this being a sweater. Don't know exactly which pattern I'm gonna use. I have maybe a couple in mind that it could work for. And so I would, I would visit a new shop when I was traveling. I traveled a lot the first like three months of the year and I, I visited some yarn shops while I, while I was traveling because that's one of my favorite activities to do. Um, and so I, I just have like a lot, a lot of yarn that I have accumulated that is beautiful and that is going to make beautiful sweaters and I want to knit it up. And then I also have just like random, like I've got a lot of sock yarn. I've got, I don't know. I, I don't, yet tend to make like shawls but I'm sure that I have plenty of sock yarn that I could combine to make some shawls so I've got like a whole bunch of um Susan B. Anderson's kits of her cute little stuffies that I have bought and not yet knit up so I have the things I have all the things I have like my own little yarn shop I mean I, my, it, my stash is great. It's not, I know that some people, some people have a way bigger stash than I do, which is great. And some people have hardly any stash, which is great. Nothing is good. Nothing is bad. It's just whatever you're happy with. Um, but I actually really want to mainly, mainly knit from my stash. Now, will I purchase yarn this year? Yes, I am not gonna kid myself, but I'm gonna try to limit it. Um, like I have a couple of the Fable sweater. I'm gonna put a, a picture of it up here. It's like this unicorn pattern on a sleeve and there's like a mane. It is so cute and I have twin nieces that are like the perfect age, they're eight, right now and I'm thinking for their ninth birthday I would like to knit them each one of those sweaters in March for March I don't know if I'll make it by March or not because it's two sweaters but so like something like that I I'm not gonna have the yarn for in my stash because even if I did it's it's either earmarked for a sweater for me or just it's that's something that's like more specific that I didn't, you know, envision for myself. It's, I'm going to make it in whatever colors they want. And, you know, so, so something like that, or if Owen wants a specific sweater, like I'll have to make a purchase, you know, for that. But I, yeah, I have plenty here to keep me busy. So where am I going with this? <laughs> I'm going to start that stash along. Stop, drop, and knit your stash along. Right? Is that what I said? I think so. And I'm going to have that be an ongoing thread as well. Um, you know, I'm going to keep that open for the full year, 2021. So so there's going to be two threads for right now in my group. The spin along and the knit your stash along. And I'm going to draw prizes periodically from both of them. Um, yeah, I don't exactly know the rules. I would say like for the knit your stash along, it's just you, anything from your stash. It doesn't have to be like deep stash. If you have deep stash, use your deep stash. Um, 
but just just you whether like you purchased something a while ago like I did for specific things or you just like have like random skeins of things I did um I did a, a test knit for Annie at Bo Boho Chic Fiber Co a couple of years ago and used like stash for it like I I said all right I am gonna do this test knit for you on the condition that I have everything I need in my stash already and it turns out so beautiful because I don't know like it's it's one thing to go like shopping for a specific sweater or project and and to pick out colors specific to that project that like you know are gonna go together um, but it's also really interesting to just look at what you have in your own stash and go stash stash diving and see what combinations of things you can come up with for for a pattern without just going and buying new yarn for that project so i i hope that many of you will join me in this because i i need to stay motivated to knit all my wonderful yarn and um shop less have less yarn acquisitions I'm still going to have an acquisition section, but, you know, probably books and other things that are not always just going to be yarn. So, yeah, I just, I just want to use my yarn because I love all of it. It is beautiful. I bought it for a reason because I loved it. So everything that I have here, I love. And so I'm going to use it and I'm going to turn it into sweaters and socks and shawls and cowls and hats and mittens and i'm gonna turn it into things that i am going to love even more because they will be usable and not just sitting around looking pretty in hiding in bins where i can't even see them so okay that's all i've got this was kind of a long one today, I think because I skipped podcasting last week for New Year's and yeah, I mean, I, I put out a couple episodes, but they weren't like a, a regular episode like this. They were, they were a bit different. So I guess I had a lot to say today. I was worried that I wasn't going to have that much to talk about because I'm being very monogamous with my test knit. But it turns out that once I start talking about knitting, and spinning, I never shut up. I just keep going. So I happen to really like long podcasts because then I'm not constantly like searching for the next thing to watch and I can just knit and knit and knit. So I hope that a lot of you like that as well <laughs> because yeah, I, I just apparently have long podcasts. So anyway, <laughs> That's all I've got for you guys. So go ahead and join my Ravelry group. Um, make sure that you are subscribed to my podcast so that we can announce that giveaway. I'm hoping we're going to get there by next week so that I can announce it then um, officially and like have it open for, for comments to choose the prize from. So that's my hope is that is that the next episode I do will be a giveaway episode. So help me get there subscribe and make sure that you like this episode and leave me a comment um i know that i asked for a few things like that three color work technique help me with that you guys i need help i need to because i need to knit faster with three colors i'm getting really worried so okay it is late now i'm babbling have a great night have a great weekend have a great 2021 have a great everything. I love you all. Goodbye. <laughs>